Hey, 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 what the heck? Sorry, guys. Yes, I came in rushing. Why? Because of the United States of America. It is burning. Yes, look at this. This is the Pacific Coast Highway. It is now closed down. And look at this all alongside. You see charred cars. These were homes that lined the coastline, all gone. In the distance, you can see that chimney standing. The destruction is catastrophic. Yes, guys, I know. Maybe you're asking yourself, Semnumzan, what do I stand to lose if the United States of America is banning? Because of I'm very much far away from that country. I'm even worse in the southern part of Africa. Yes, guys, I'm here to actually tell you that in South Africa, you could actually experience such harsh conditions yes guys we could experience forest fire which would lead to a lot of devastation yes guys so what weather condition could lead south africa to experiencing such conditions it is called the bear winds yes guys bear in africans it's an african's weight meaning a mountain meaning they are mountain winds they are winds which blow because of the mountain or down the mountain. All right, guys. So in a simple definition, what are bear winds? Bear winds are hot, dry winds which descend from a higher plateau down to the coastal areas in winter. Yes, guys, you know the trend. For you to better understand, I have to write down the definition. What did I say? I said they are hot, dry wind. Yes which descend from a higher plateau down the coastal areas. During winter, yes. Yes, guys, if you are already a subscriber of Close Up Education, you should have already known by now that when I give out that definition, A, this is a gun blazing definition. This definition will give you everything you need to know about any topic I'm teaching. So make sure that if you have not already subscribed, like that, like this video first, click the subscribe button. Why? Because of close up education will always devastate you with this education. Yes, guys. So now let's continue. We said they are hot and dry, hot and dry winter. This obviously interlinks with each other but then does not move further descends they descend where from where from the higher plateau who doesn't know what a plateau is a plateau we know it from page 10 guys a plateau is just a, a, a flat higher lying area from the, the the original sea level it is a higher from the the coastal area so it is a flat land which it is big it can hold settlement yes guys and you definitely know close up education it is nothing without sketches let's draw a sketch for us to better understand so we said our plateau is a flat high lying area it is flat and is high lying area from where from the coastal areas it is higher than the coastal areas or the sea level so it is higher than the coastal areas or the sea level so this is our land. This is what our plateau, right? This is our plateau. This is definitely what we call our definitely escarpment. This is our escarpment. Our escarpment, it is a mountain that covers this flat plateau area. Yes, we definitely have it even in here, right? Let's do it like this. So this is South Africa, guys, when we are looking at on a cross section, right? So we have to understand that this is the plateau. We already have our plateau from our definition. And what else? What else do we need? We need to know that it is winter. When it's winter, what is happening? We know that when it's winter, there is descending of cold air. In winter, there's descending of cold air. Meaning if there's descending of cold air, in the plateau, it is called the Kalahari High. The Kalahari High, it is closer to the plateau. When there is wind, when it is winter, it means the Kalahari 
high pressure, it is closer to the plateau. Kalahari high pressure, it is closer to the plateau, then it is winter. So there's cold air descending to the plateau. So all right, Semnumza. I can see there's cold air descending to the plateau, but then how does bear winds okay? Yes, guys. So as this cold air descends, it will definitely do a diverge on the ground of the plateau, right? Yes, and as it diverges from the ground of the plateau, we know that air pressure moves from what? From a higher pressure to a low pressure. So as it diverges, it is trying to find where there is a low pressure gap, where it can actually fill up the gap yes guys so it diverges and escapes it diverges and escapes the escarpment and escapes the plateau in fact right so as it escapes it is now doing what descending down the escarpment in the coastal areas yes it descends down to reach what we call a low pressure which is found in the coastal areas what is that low pressure called that low pressure it is called the coastal low if you see a low pressure within the co coastal areas it is called the coastal low yes guys then maybe it could also descend here because of what is happening there's a low pressure created by what by a mid latitude cyclone we know a mid latitude cyclone can create a low pressure area right so the high pressure air could move towards the coastal areas maybe because of there's a mid latitude cyclone that side or maybe there's a coastal low yes guys so there are two weather conditions that could actually make the back winds to be possible it has to be the low coastal low or a mid latitude cyclone which is in the coastal areas yes guys which will obviously force the air to move from a high pressure to try and fill up the gap in the low pressure areas so obviously as this warm this air descends down the escarpment what will happen this is pure geography guys what is this let's say uh, from our highest plateau from our higher plateau down to the sea level the coastal areas the sea level we know the coastal areas guys when we are speaking about the coastal areas we have four provinces which are known as the coastal provinces which is kwazulu natal western cape uh, eastern cape and northern cape yes guys those four provinces are can be affected by bear winds yes so those are the provinces that could actually be affected by bear winds because of they are located in the coastal areas and that is where the air descends to what what did i say i said it is kwazulu natal so let's use kwazulu natal as an example let's say this is our drunken speck mountain this is our drunken speck mountain right which is separating kwazulu natal because of KwaZulu Natal is a coastal province. I've said it, right? KwaZulu Natal and Mpumalanga. Yes, because of Mpumalanga, it is an inland province. It is within the land, in the plateau, like Gauteng, your free state. You know, free state is even worse. It's inside the country. So it can never be a coastal. The coastal are those ones that are near the ocean. Yes, guys. So now let's continue. Mpumalanga does what? Mpumalanga continues to release the cold air that is descending from it right and it descends down the escarpment in the kwazulu natal obviously this is kwazulu natal province it, it, it will not be looking like it is a steep gradient but then it is definitely a steep gradient not a very much steep but then maybe a steep it is very steep from Mpumalanga and kwazulu natal it is not the difference between Mpumalanga and kwazulu natal it is not only the distance uh -uh. it is also the height kwazulu natal it is lower whereas in Pumalanga, it is much higher so meaning the air that comes from Pumalanga, it is descending towards kwazulu natal yes and as it descends it will increase the temperature it will start to be hot remember we drew this line let's say from Pumalanga to kzn because of i said the difference is not only the distance but then the altitude so let's say maybe it's three point uh, three thousand and something three thousand and something uh feet young tot three thousand and something feet or miles young distance the height the altitude so and what do they know and what do we know we know that the temperature increases per hundred mile per hundred it increases with one percent so per hundred
it increases with what we call one degrees Celsius. Just think with me, guys. If it is increasing per 100 miles, and here we have 3,000 miles from Pumalanga to KZN, A, it definitely means that KZN will be experienced hot temperature during winter. It will not be easy for KZN. Let's say the temperature of Mpumalanga, it is maybe 20, and there's that descending already, there's that descending, and what percentage will it be here as it already continues to increase? It can be obviously 32 degrees. We can find KwaZulu Natal experiencing 32 degrees in winter. That is why sometimes KwaZulu Natal experience such condition during winter. It is cold with us, but then it's warm with them. Yes, guys. So definitely this is those application. You should make sure that you like this video. Why? Because of these conditions can actually ban a lot of things. Obviously, it is not easy to sleep when it's very much hot. It is destabilizing a lot of things. It has a lot of disadvantages, but then what can we do to stop it? We can do a lot of things to stop it. Employ some fire fighters when we see that it is too much dry. The area is too dry. Any forest fire could happen. Educate people about forest fire so that maybe they could not be throwing their cigarettes anywhere where there is a dry forest or some, something like that yes guys and even maybe implement some fire bricks the fire bricks guys please i will show you these are the fire bricks this is how it actually looks like these fire bricks can stop the continuous of the fire it can actually help the fire not to continue and burn the whole KZN province. Yes, guys. So this is Berwin's very much simple. It can be caused by coastal low, but then most importantly, the Kalahari high pressure and the low pressure, which can be caused here by a mid-latitude cyclone. Yes, guys, this is how Berwin's okay. Hey, make sure you like this video. Okay.